Web page data types work. He's already bought out uh, simple HTML. No, I'm talking about whole web pages. Oh, so it's always been Universal data type. Any data type. That Matthew, above all other projects. We probably won't be filming all time. Above all other projects, web browser. I thought you were going to say laptop. I have to say, using data type, now I, I, I've never created a data type, but using yeah. data types is painfully easy. Right? It is so great. Yeah, you know, if, you know, if, you know, if you want to display, you want to display <laughs> a graphic, right, an image, it's oh, yeah. so right, simple to use. So and then so any, data, any data type that you have, it yeah, just it's magically it's appears. It's hard to open. Yeah, okay. I, just, I think so. It throws it on the screen. Blue is that pretty, pretty short. That's a lot longer though than what I than what I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> this one has a yes, GUI this, on it. Oh no, my, mine, is, is mine is a window requirement. Instantiation. They may make it the right layout gadgets, image gadgets. Well, yeah. fill the image data with using data types, <laughs> and uh, you get a little file, little file handler. Not a media handler, but like a file handler. And uh, from Kill. ASL, <laughs> and it just opens the window of whatever it is. It's like a simple multi Yeah. I yeah. wanted yeah. to play with data types, and I was like, wow, this is easy. And I even opened an old Photoshop file that I had on my Mac from the 90s because I had Warp PSD. He's in the store. Where did we, what we build And I can't tell you how cool that is. in the store, and this is going to change. Okay. But for the time being, this is the web browser. You, you do. do. You need your yeah, really password. 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 The one where you break out all the ones and uh, with the classes. Yeah. It's in there. I thought I did that. You did? Okay. At least you don't. I do. You need that. You need, yeah. Well, then go to the home button and clear everything. Go to the home button. That's a little house. A little house. Oh, this article. Yeah, yeah. Now type in. There it is. This URL. Can't read it. No, I'm not saying. That's okay. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but there it is. This is not a data type. Yes, this is a new text data type. Okay. Well, hang on. I wanted to show you this. I'd love for there to be a video data type. It surprised me because I wasn't sure of the differences. CDXL. Before I say That's um, to an animation. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about something that could actually play an impact or something. Right. Right. Multi-humor. Yeah. Well, doable. Although, all in all, yes, that, 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 that smells like a Frederick project. Chris, yeah. maybe he has scaling image files so you can show pictures, play cells. Did anybody go through these? No. No. Pretty boring. Where's this? Are you online? Data types. Yeah, then no. we do a scaling, which I found so interesting. Here. Scaling with data types. I didn't read this. So you can do more than just display. You can actually process a little bit, depending on the data type. Like there's a scale method that you can use to scale it to a different size. Oh. Or you can. So you don't have to do that. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. yes. There's all sorts of methods. <coughs> Where is the end here? Start. Oh, that's cool. And then this this is showing different qualities of scaling you can perform with the data type. So it actually has levels of scaling. It, it's built in. So the data type owner he, he uh, provides methods for all these different. Uh, yeah. Okay. Usually, I think that one's a picture data type. Thing. So all the data types underneath get that automatically. Oh. <coughs> so the superclass defines the methods that have to be divided, and it by the does the generic ones for you. Okay. Yeah. And then your subclasses do the format conversions, oh, and writing and reading. Uh, yep, right yeah. So it's pretty tell good. Tell me something, guys. Yes. Why would it not run, run in, in the, the console? console. Code back. Is it? Well, you can do that. You can force it. Oh, yeah. Yep. What that should need forcing. Well, you know that. That was lesson one. Wait, how many years? Five. 
<laughs> there you go. HI for sound. This was interesting. I actually had some troubles with this one. It's always the, uh, the picture data types. I, I installed this new sound data type from the Enhancer pack. It didn't work. It crashed. Oh. It's got a bug. <laughs> In the data type? Yep. Yes, I discovered that. I know what's wrong. <laughs> so this one actually reads it with data types and plays it with DHI. You didn't have to do it that way. You could just read it and play it with the data type itself. You Is there a demonstrate how you can merge two things together? So for the sound data type and the animation data type, yeah. where you don't have static data, is there a method to determine? Um, so once you once you start to play the file, can you have a um, like a loop sitting and, and pulling to get where it is and to get a current index of where it is? Depends how they wrote the data type. Yeah, yeah. Like the the Aeon uh, <laughs> sound data type, the stream, but the classic one doesn't. <laughs> So their sound data type isn't just a subtype, it's actually got even more. Okay. Which has always been possible because you know how many times you've seen in the forums. You can't stream a data type. Well you can. <laughs> you just gotta do it. Yeah, you can. Yeah. It it was always possible. So yeah. used to be this argument that no you can't. I think usually that argument gets started by people who I just didn't want to then be able to say, ah, oh, but you can't look right. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. usually something like that. Points of why that argument gets started in the first place. You can see, yeah. It's just a small technical problem, easily solved. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually used this. It worked fine on my machine. Play AHR. Yeah. These do function. Uh, and there's some examples of things you got to worry about and tags to worry about. Um, one frustrating thing about data types, though, is if something goes wrong, it doesn't generally tell you an error code. <laughs> it just doesn't work. I got lots. Oh, yeah. like, well, why is it not working? <laughs> you know, so it, because of the the way they're implemented, it's it's annoying that way. I find. Same with uh, something like reaction or MUI. It just doesn't work. Just tell you why. It doesn't work. Whatever it is you're trying to do. <laughs> there was um, something else with data types. Something about, um, doesn't it lock the file while you have it open or something like that? Or is there a way to? Oh, yeah, no, it does. I can't remember. We did it when we were testing multiviewer. There was some sort of problem with and, and Andy said this was just purely a data types problem. He couldn't do anything about it. Oh. I'm trying to remember what it was now. We fixed that in our types of times. Was it? Yeah. You did. Yeah, yeah. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Why would well, why, why, why would data, data, data why would the why would the data type even know that it's a file? Yeah. It's, it's data. data. It doesn't even know it's a file. Yeah. DOS knows it's a file. Yeah. <laughs> but the data type subsystem doesn't know. It does open it as a file by default. Oh, does it? Yeah. Oh, okay. You can also pull data types from RAM. Remember there's a way to specify the source? It's just a stream of data, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this one does a DTST file. Yeah. Oh, okay. See, okay. That's, okay. How, okay, okay. There that's how it does it, right? So uh, okay. well, it doesn't have to be file. Yeah, if you open up, I just open up a text file and multi feed. And if you try to delete the file while it's open in multi view, it says object is in use. Well, that's it. Should be. No, it shouldn't. It read the data. It showed it to you on the screen. It should close the file. It's done oh, with it. Oh, okay. So well, that's the programmer should close the data type. Well, but does the <laughs> rendering of the data type still stay open? Well, if or you render that, with data types, it has to be open. Yeah. Well, that's You're rendering problem. with it. Yep. You rendered it. Rendered past tense. Well, then you got to the copy it to another bitmap and close it. Then. In your program, it's the program. So you're done yeah. with the file at that point. <laughs> so the job's over. Yeah, but you got to copy it. 
if you want to keep it. See, that's the problem. If you've rendered it, it's done. It's shown. <laughs> move the file, uh, move on, on. let progress continue. Yeah, that is an interesting point. I'd never consider that because I only did it with image like gadget. Well, because that's the way, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, that's the way things work on other computers. On, but on an Amiga, if you open up a text file in, in Notepad, it doesn't lock the file. You can delete the file and keep it open in Notepad. That's an implementation thing. Right. Well, so well, data types should be correctly implemented. That's my point. Oh, <laughs> the program. You read the data. The data's finished being read from the file. Yeah, yeah. Close the file. You're done with it. Here we go. This is this one. You couldn't a, possibly know when to close it. This is this is like the best article he wrote. The GUI toolkit. Yes. This is pretty impressive. Yeah. This, this one is pretty neat. The all gadgets one. Yeah, at the bottom. Yeah. That's incredible. That's huge. So he shows you uh, step by step how to how to do it. A nice reaction GUI. It's fairly simple. It's not super super simple, but it's getting there. And uh, actually, there's a new way to do menus now that it, this article doesn't mention. Remember the menu class? Menu class. That's brand new. So. You can do it this way, which is the older way, or you can use menu class, which is even better. It's up to you. So there's three ways to do menus now. Actually, four. You can do it the old-fashioned way. The old-fashioned is ridiculous. Way. That's also ridiculous. The this reaction is, way, if you the reaction use way, and the cl menu class way. Well, the menu class way is... Well, there's probably, if you there's probably at least two or three other ways on top of that. If you use the macros, if you use the macros, the new way saves you a lot of typing. If you yeah. don't use the macros, it's, all, it's still a lot of typing. But the the, the, the new menu class with uh, the macros is fantastic. It, yeah. it really is very, very easy to use. Nice. There's an article I think dedicated just to the menu class somewhere on yes. the wiki. Yep. That walks you through there it. There is. There is. Yeah. Yeah, it's there. It's probably even and it's pretty long. Oh, there it is. Now, who actually did? Did Andy write this? Who wrote this? The the new menu uh, class. Massimo. Oh, oh. Massimo. Massimo. Yeah. He did this. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I converted it to Wikipedia. Massimo Trattiglioni or I can't. Yes. Yeah, that guy. Yes. If you pronounce the name, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know Italian. Um, that happened. Good cuisine, though. I just like that one. Oh. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. 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 So this will take a moment. There it is. There you go. Right there. So if you use if you use the if you use the macros oh, without macros yeah. looks like this it's it's still it's still better than Gadgetools. It's okay with but macros look at that that is that is clean beautiful right <laughs> <Like> that. <laughs> that is beautiful yes and you just define define your little labels and what they point to somewhere else and that's it that's all you have yeah yeah that's nice. A lot less typing, a lot less clutter. Yep. Even Swing doesn't do it as simply. Wow. He did a good job. He did. <laughs> yeah. That's what makes all those fancy new menus. Yeah, and it's easy to, uh, it's very easy to add keyboard shortcuts and... Like this one. I haven't, where where do you um, where do you add the icons? Do you have an example in there where you... Uh, oh yeah, yeah, there's an example of everything in this article. So I think I read that. Yep. Very nice. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> it was on and on and on and on. It was quite... A long piece of text. It came to me as plain text. Yes. That was a while ago. <laughs> yeah. You spent a, a day while. editing. I spent a while editing. I'm becoming the ultimate editor now. It's also a lot easier to implement um, <laughs> menu sub items that involve radio buttons or check marks with this. Yes. So there's like a lot of stuff in here that's just nice. The way it should have been. In the first place, yes. Going back in time. So did you try that big giant example? Did you try, actually try to make it yourself? No, but you know what? While we're sitting here, it's pretty, pretty intense. 
I could try it right now. It's been a while. Will it work? I'm pulling it up. Will it work? Do, do, do. The time I copy. Oh, or you've got the browser. Don't for, don't forget the graphics. Yes. I've already forgotten. Oh wait, that's not the. Uh, hold on. You don't have. I don't think you copied the big one. Yeah. You did? Because I thought all gadgets was the big one. Oh yeah, I got both then. Okay. That's what happened. That happened uh, before. Oh, I did Reaction EX. That's a different one, isn't it? It is. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah I didn't do the yeah, that, that, that's Oh, that's short. Yeah, that's just a little, oh, anybody can do that. little layout action. A little <laughs> Come oh, with the bubble help. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there, there's the monster. There you go. Now you're talking. I if I can focus it. Every time I copy on the web, I get three characters. Oh, you mean where there are blank lines? Yes. Yep. yep, I know. Really? Same issues. Awesome. Yeah, it doesn't matter if I use it up and I think it's that, I, I don't know if it's an assignment about it. Once upon a time, it's a whole thing. Strip the damn stray characters out of the thing. It may actually be an issue with Odyssey and how it copies text. No, I, I, that's why I switched to eyebrows. Same thing? Pulling some uh, slash 240 characters. Slash 240. Yep, that's, yep, that's right. We're all trying to do this. Come on. Are you getting them? Are you copying it? Um, the, it's so big. It is. There's no way I was going to go through that whole thing and clean up the code. <laughs> There's got to be an easier way to do this. Uh, there probably is. John. Apparently. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> well, 
Now, I may not have all these actually now that I look at it. There's a, just a pile of includes here. I don't have a top so that's all standard SDK. ICC class? Yeah. Which version? It's which SDK. Connect class or something like that. All right, ICC. <coughs> Beautiful piece of How do I pipe the output to a text file here? Pipe what? Like a uh, steady file? No, I, I, so I've got GCC, right? It's spitting out so much stuff that it's going past the buffer. So what? Oh, to GCC? Yeah, I want to pipe the out, GCC's out, error output error. to a text file. How do I do that? It's a character or something, right? That redirects so standard error? Can you just use what was it? I don't remember. I should remember now. I can't remember. It's like, it's greater than I don't remember greater than or two of them or I can't. Yeah, it's like uh, I can't remember. But basically, it's complaining mostly about I because it doesn't like an intuition. My intuition. I'm trying to remember that myself. It's been a little while. Where do I have it? I'm trying to remember what did that. I didn't leave. Uh, in a rex port. In Where does I intuition get declared? Not necessarily create all. Ah. Go so star this. Well, I see that working. God saves me. That's how you do it. That's the experience. See, I'm not saying we're on things like, oh wait, we're well, here. I'm not saying we're I intuition and uh, uh, where are they getting declared? Oh, blast, I forgot that she's using Aqua. Okay. You didn't copy the command line? No, I didn't do that at all. Denied. <laughs> now it works ish, kind of. No, it's not working. That's not working at all. Sad. No, I've got a window that says all reaction gadgets, and it's got six tabs. Uh, is it empty? empty? It's empty. You need those files. I took put them there. Put them in the same directory. I, I did. Yeah. Uh, That's it. Put on the C in there. Especially images. There we go. Now we're talking. Good? Yes. Ah. Oh, Lord, there are a billion of these bloody things in there. Need to write a script. I like the instantiation uh, for oh, That's good. I just copied and pasted. What are you getting funny characters there? It's because you're, you're um, I either paste in the notepad or I paste in the code badge. It doesn't feel good. characters have to keep Cygnus Ed. That's your answer for everything. Turbo Tech. Cygnus Ed. Cygnus Ed. I got your Cygnus Ed right here. Oh, now. No, seriously, I've got to install, but I... <laughs> <laughs> uh, where is Storm Editor, whatever it's called? Storm Ed C or whatever it is? Storm C. You're not going to find it in there. Only about all the same level. That's from, that's from a long time ago. You're talking about the new one, right? Yeah. Uh, where did you install it? I'm trying to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> I've got mine open right here. Looks good. Mm. Seems to have lost it. You have to be very careful though because when you copy, you can't copy his copy protection thing, right? So I tried to copy this over to my X5000 and he says you can't do that. So now I've got to... You have to buy another one? I'm not sure yet. I'm, I'm sending him an email. He hasn't answered back yet. Um, Olaf? No, no, no. Uh, Simon. Oh, that's his, his being help. I don't know if he wrote it. I don't know who wrote it, but he's selling it. Simon. Uh, Neumann. Yeah. And the click tab example was interesting too. Uh, but 
all gadgets is the most fun. Did I have a calendar in mind? It's live in the browser. And then you go to the Yeah, I do really like this. So when you click on any one of these gadgets, right, he has this nice little print out thing. So you can print out, you know, what actually happened. Yeah. yeah. Something useful instead of. Well, the best thing that he has, though, is the screen mode thing. Because if I can be perfectly frank with you, screen modes are completely unfathomable. Mm -hmm. Right? It's just some, it, to me, it just looks like some random hexadecimal identifier. And I don't know how they get formed. Good. <laughs> you want that, do you? Yes. You don't You're want not it. allowed to know. Okay. <laughs> I know how you they are. You can't handle the truth. <laughs> you can't handle it. That's that's distinctly <laughs> possible. But, uh, um, <laughs> see, what I found out is there's secret information in there. What kind of secret? What do you mean secret that, information? That give away what the properties of the mode. Well, that, wouldn't you want to know that? No, you want the. The programmers you want to clear AI. AI. Yeah. Uh, See, they used to cheat and go bit banging. Go rogue. Went rogue. Yeah. Right. Well, then there became too many modes to fit in there, and then it became uh, a key to a database now. So That's that, what that is? Yeah. Now it's a key to look up what the real data is over there. Just some hash table somewhere? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that was their solution. I see. So developers weren't doing what they were supposed to do, so we're going to make it, okay, we're going to hide the details. Yeah, which was all part of the RTG era, retargetable graphics. Sorry, Robert. Well, you have the ability to change all Because I wanted to know what they meant, too, and I could not figure it out unless you read the source code. They purposely obfuscated <coughs> what they meant. <laughs> and they included that comment in the source code to say why we did it? Or? No, no, it's a surprise. Surprise. Because yeah. I was determined to figure it out one day. <laughs> Darn it, there's a pattern here and I'll find it. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly what you mean. This has to be deterministic. Yes. Oh. I must discover what it is. The aliens okay. are involved. I know they are. <laughs> Initialization discards qualifiers from the pointer target type. Ooh. That's a good one. You think it was a string pointer instead of a constant string pointer. Is there an index of the, uh, I mean, I mean, I know there is because we have all the auto dogs. Mm -hmm. There's an awful lot of gadgets in there. Something wrong with Dr. Pepper? No, it just has a seam on it. That just scared me a little. No, that, that's for football. Still a little scary. Okay. The one of the string pointers a constant string pointer. Because I've tried to do this. There's an awful lot of gadgets to explore. Yes. Yes, there are. There's also a class diagram for those. There is, which you created. Yeah. I think it would be nice, though, at some point, if, uh, maybe I should do this. I'd quite like to document what the gadgets actually do just from a standpoint. Some a quick summary. Yeah, a quick look up, right? Yeah, yeah. Some of them were pretty yeah. obvious. Yeah. You know, list browser and Menu browser. Something, thing. Yeah. But, but some of them were not as, as obvious. Yeah, like uh, slider. And it, it's like, there's slider is not just, slider can be a lot of different things. There's a lot of different Here, sliders you can use. So you take that little bit of description. And then like a little screenshot. Put that on there with a the screenshot or something like that. Yeah, we did, never did that because of the extra word. Excuse me. Oh. And it's proportional again. Well, what's the difference between that and the... <laughs> I don't know, actually. I don't know what, what is proportional gadget. And now there's a bunch of new ones. Because there's, there's a space gadget. Like, uh, look at my yep. list of gadgets. Yep. you got your space gadget. I've used that. I've got pie chart now. That's third party. Yeah, but it's in it. Center gadget? I'm not familiar with that one. What does that tell you? That's, that's used in one context only. Let me get input. What? Yeah. Yeah. You mean, you mean the press program, they get input? Yes. 
partition dot which is only going to be. There it is. Um, Well, how did you make it happen? You counted in good faith. Oh, you know, I don't have anything plugged in. So oh, is this where you... Is if, I, if I plug in a joystick... Big picture in little, you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 The diff you can do. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's new. <laughs> I don't think I even put it on the wiki today. Oh, I must. I think it did one. What is diff you? It's for, you know, file compare, the utility file compare? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. It's a graphic, uh, graphic. Right. Right. file compare. You need a gadget out of it. Like meld or something. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 They needed like a LED gadget. Whoa, I have never heard of that. Yeah. Sketchboard? Yeah. Just something yeah. as an indicator, yeah. you know? What, what, what is a sketchboard? Yeah. Yeah. Sketchboard? Yeah. Another one. Yeah, what is that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. What is that? Yeah. What is that is for your web mail. That's it. You got it. So what, sir? Mandy Brook, the sketch book. Oh, is it? That's here. Oh, so you can draw that thing? Yeah. Oh, okay. Very Mac OS. Oh, they're gorgeous. Yeah. Except this is in color. Ooh. No, but that was in like the original control panel, I mean, way back in the day, so that you could draw you know, Mac OS. this. Up. You couldn't do that on a, on a, on a 128K, that's for sure. Nowadays that's you want photorealistic backgrounds. No. <laughs> <laughs> I actually remember when I got my first Macintosh 2, I could have a background that was in color. And, the, and this trash can had gray in it. And I just thought, wow, this is the peak of interface design. Yeah. We have arrived. <laughs> <laughs> so beautiful. I just remember you comparing the little. price of the Mac 2. <laughs> huh? I remember comparing the price of the original Mac 2, a fully loaded Amiga with a graphic card. And all that the stuff. Mac 2s were so, so expensive. No. Oh, God. I could have bought a house for the what it cost, uh, 2FX. No, that, that's hyperbole. I could have bought a car. A 2FX. A 2FX yeah, was yeah. just unbelievable. <laughs> and then one more. Utility. There you go. There's actually a lot of very useful things in there. It's quite a the random number generator I use. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's handy, handy. Yeah. Okay, let's check, check digits. Never tried that. That's strange. It does uh, <laughs> checksums. Various algorithms. Useful. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You need to do checksums. Try something. There you got it. <laughs> Check some is well, we got you on you. <laughs> well, it's just a bind. I know. <laughs> it's binary. It's binary. <laughs> As an exercise for the student, <laughs> you figure out what that means. Yeah. Hello, dear. Man, set man, move man. There you go. Somebody asked about moving memories. Oh, actually, it was there. He goes. <laughs> Who was that man? <laughs> random number generation. It's got a little pseudo random <laughs> generator built in. Uh, unique ID, which is handy. And various other bits and pieces that weren't documented very much. Display tree, skip lists, miscellaneous, printing, all sorts of stuff in the utility. Was added. Anywhere else to go? Yeah, we just kind of throw things in there. Hopefully, best. <laughs> and the new, the newest ones were the UTF utility functions, which aren't uh, mentioned there. There they are. I picked up smaller resolutions so you can actually read this. You know, I can almost read that. I can make it smaller. <laughs> As I said, I can almost read it. <laughs> so we have the beginnings of uh, UTF encoding and decoding. <laughs> Yay! 
And the real point here is you don't want anybody to read it. That's right. And then you'll know that there's errors in there. Well, I don't have to read it to know that. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Skewered. <laughs> Who invited that guy? <laughs> I should have milked your car. <laughs> Any, uh, any questions? Besides sure LD? No? no? Anyone? Anyone? Slick. <laughs> I could go on, but I'm kind of skimming a bit because uh, somebody wanted to look at a driver. Yes, please. <laughs> oh, wait. You, do you want to show them the movement stuff? We're oh, yeah. About the, the yeah, you missed that a little bit. Come on, man. I'm sorry, the missus was on the phone. <laughs> when the boss calls, you gotta, you know, get gotta jump. So there's clear mem, set mem, move mem. Now, ideally, these are optimized for your particular hardware, so you don't have to optimize them, right? That's the whole purpose. So we can use DMA. Yeah, actually, uh, they can even use DMA under the covers. Could they actually use? Uh, okay, cool. Yeah. They're allowed. Can they use like a DMR engine on some new power hardware, perhaps? I don't know what a DMR engine dynamic is. Dynamic memory relocation. He really doesn't know what new hardware like is. So you say, I want, it's an instruction. No. And you've got two registers, and you say, well, actually, it's a couple. And you're going to move the block starting here and ending here to here. And the hardware does it. The hardware does it. <laughs> Finally! <laughs> no, I remember all the M360 doing that. <laughs> We've had it on Xeno for a while. Wow. Well, it's important, right? Because if you yeah. have a whole bunch of like logical partitions and you're shutting them down or shoveling them over because of memory affinity or something, yeah. you're moving all this quantity of storage around. And you don't want to be sitting there for like 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. So, hardware, hardware engine for it. Yeah. Why not? It's very simple. I mean, <laughs> you, you, you would have thought we would have implemented this sort of thing a long time ago, but yeah, you would have. I guess ran out of space or something. It's always space excuse with those guys. Well, it also has to be architected too, right? It has to be part of the architecture. It's not something that. Ah. Let's go through ISA. All right. Fine. Exact devices. There's something else you wanted to look at. What is it? Oh, okay. 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 In the beginning. <laughs> All right. In the beginning. Was the device. <laughs> and Rath moved over the face of the device. <laughs> you sure you don't drink? I do. It's not right now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talk yeah. cheap, is that what you're saying? There's no pain, right? You know, pain. That's uh, the whole point. I want, I want to know. So, um, device input output has to go through the skeleton structure, right? Now, a device is just a library. It's like any lo loadable dynamic object. You load it up, you call vectors, things happen. Everybody's happy. Um, however, as I've learned, there are kind of uh, these profiles for devices that have emerged over time. Um, if you want to make something that talks to a hard drive, you have to follow this track disk template for the device driver, which was created to control Amiga floppy disk drives. And the reason for this is because? Because all the software is assuming that template. Right? All the old software. 
So it thinks, well, if I send it a command read, that means what? It means this. Command read of this read device ID. Right. If you set the write protection on and off, well, you expect the hard drive write protection to go on and off, right? So the trick is to kind of choose which template you're going to follow, for one thing, right? Now, it, with the with SATA driver, it's pretty obvious. You want to follow the track disk template. Why not SCSI? It's not It's not used. Actually, a SCSI device is a track disk device. Oh, it is a track disk device. It is. The okay. same template again. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's... I miss. <laughs> it's also that SATA device driver. <laughs> Honestly, give <laughs> her work under these conditions. Honestly, <laughs> so uh, so the first thing I had to do to, is decide how to how to do the driver, right? So uh, you can write it from scratch. I think I mentioned that in my little intro, did I? I mentioned it. Nope. No, I didn't. Okay. Somewhere I mentioned it in there. I could initialization uh, create. Where did it begin? Right here, I think it was. Yes, the oh, oh, there it is, okay. There it is. Where you have to go, okay, am I going to write from scratch, or am I going to steal it from another driver, or am I going to use another framework, or what? So, did some digging around, and this libata seemed to be the best thing to try. Because libata is well proven. Everybody, everybody in the Linux world knows about it. Um, I kind of stumbled upon it and it was recommended at the same time. Right? So people like Alex Perez would say, why don't you just use the video? <laughs> to go look it up. What is this thing, right? It's the Linux device driver for every ATA device in there. Finally, basically, right? I don't know if there's alternatives to it. I didn't really look. Because, you know, Linux, there's usually one or two ways to do everything. But, um, it was relatively contained, self-contained, I thought, in, in the source code tree. So I went, I'll try it. So the trick would be uh, how to meld the two together, right? And that's what this article is about, how to meld the two, get the two together. Now, I have a, the same problem will appear if you want to make, say, a Ethernet device. Just randomly pick that one. <laughs> now, an Ethernet device is not listed here. The template for the Ethernet device is called SANA, SANA 2. That's the template for that one. And you take one of the existing drivers and kind of implement all the functions the same way it wants to be done. And uh, then you would have to go, okay, so what source code should I use to build the Ethernet device, right? Should I make it from scratch, should I steal it, I, whatever, right? Same pattern occurs. Uh, you could do that with a keyboard, the narrator device, that's an interesting one. I always wanted to try that one, this guy, because there's new, um, new ways to get speech out of a computer now, right? So if you wanted to use some modern, what were those things called? Uh, they were released on OS4 Depot. Oh, and flight? flight. Yeah. yeah, well, you could just hook it in, and then suddenly all the software that used to use speech would just use your your speech synthesizer now. Done. That's the nice thing about these. The evil thing about these is it's got a lot of backwards compatibility BS in it that you don't expect to encounter. So, um, as an outsider, <laughs> you want to write uh, this driver. Well, good luck to you, sir. Because you're going to follow the template in the header file and it still won't work. And you'll beat your head for weeks trying to figure it out. Because it's doing some sneaky backdoor flip here or read there that you didn't know about. Right? So, to get rid of that problem, I went to, um, what's it called? The IDE framework. It's called. It's this IDE framework. It's a proprietary source code. Okay. And uh, Stefan Guler, Guler, 
I'm sorry. The, the French, the French, French guy. Is, his last name. Right. <laughs> well, I said, I, 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 I said, I want to use it. use that source code. Is that okay? Said, yeah, it's okay. Because <laughs> one of the problems is living TA is GPL. So anything I take from his source code would become GPL because I'm merging the two together, right? So permissions need to be obtained. Went through all those steps because I didn't want to have to recreate all those weird little quirks that is going to, I'm going to encounter. So I used his framework, libAT framework, and tried to smash them together. Because <laughs> I don't want to write this thing from scratch. Right? I thought that would be far more difficult. And in the end, I was correct. It is a bear of code in libAT. On and on and on and on. <laughs> so, with that in mind, I tried to write a little um, introduction on how I how I uh, did this. <laughs> That's kind of the context. So, when I was developing it, this is kind of the order I went in development. Right. The first thing I did was create a resident structure so that this thing could be a kernel module. Because if you want this thing to be available at boot time, you have to be a kernel module. Uh, same thing would go for your Ethernet device, speech device, whatever it is, keyboard. You have to be a kernel module. And the way to be a kernel module is to do that. That little structure. You put that in there, you fill in the little details according to your program, like your, your uh, this, this here is your function entry point. That's the function that will be called by the kernel. And you pick a different name, pick a priority, the rest of it just stays the same pretty much. Why launch? Oh, I called it launch. Because you're starting? Okay. <laughs> Is there a document somewhere that specifies um, the, uh, the priority of known to start modules? should ask that. There's no such document. There's no such document. However, <laughs> ah, there's a list. Hey. <laughs> okay. Now, as I was mentioning in the article, how do you know which one to choose, right? Well, it depends on what services you need at that point in time. Mm -hmm. So if you need DOS, you pick that Something priority. Below that. Or if you need mounter library, hey, right. that's what I needed. Another thing I can't do like, is, is uh, read the disk formats and figure out uh, if it's GPF or CD-ROM or it's whatever. I, I'm, I'm not interested in that. So CD-ROM, uh, audio CD, right? I wanted something else to do that. And Sebastian Bauer created that uh, mantra library to do that job for me. So I picked 54. Do I mention it here? Yes. Okay. It's a good number is because you have to pick a number between 127 and minus 128, <laughs> for one thing. <laughs> well. And I wanted it to go after Mounter Library, which was at minus 45. So the 54, that's not the priority. The priority is in the, you defined it a little further. Or is 54? It is 54, it is, right? It is 54. So why do we have to find Kmod priority oh. as minus 46? Oh, that's a good question. I must have screwed up my paste. Edit. <laughs> oh, hang on. Hang on. Your 50, oh, no, no. Your 54 is your that's something else. The init priority, not the running priority. That's a different priority. Yeah, I didn't mention it. No, this is here. Okay. That's your Kmod that, priority. There we go. 54 is your init priority. Init priority? What is that again? Well, I think. I think Exec goes through all the residents and works out which one it's going to uh, load first. Exec does, and when it's running, because this is the priority it, it uh, loads it. It loads it up and executes it. Because it also has to read your flags up there after you've laid it, after you've cold start, and decide whether you want it. your yeah. run, your run, run, run after toss springs. Oh no, that's version. Version. That's what it is. There we go. 
I just remember, is the 54 is just the version number? That's what it is. It's like, wait, 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 no, no. But that was a very good explanation. <laughs> that was a good explanation. Well, you think it all came down to be convincingly yeah, technical. Yeah. and Because it was said confidently, right? Exactly. right? Confidence equals confidence every time. It does? Well, <laughs> I mean, I'm a genius. <laughs> Oops, I yeah, goofed up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because there's 53, 53. For some reason, I hard coded the version number, which is not what I usually do. See, if, if this is bad coding practice. Mm. You should not hard code numbers in there that have no meaning. <laughs> Don't do that. All the developers get confused. Yes, otherwise, we have the, the preprocessor. See what this should say is version major or something. But I, I uh, kind of like obviously came on priority is. Yeah. Isn't it a live wiki? Can't you fix that now? <laughs> <laughs> then. All right. Okay, fine. So now your little function is going to be called launch dev. I call it launch device. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt one more time. Yep. In the in no, the in oh. the. In the documentation, do we have, is it documented in the exec device section uh, what the parameters of the, uh, the resident structure should contain and what no. the various options are? No. Yeah, there's the options, but it doesn't tell you what combination is the right one. Okay. That doesn't tell you, okay. No, no. There that I got from Stefan. They <laughs> say there, there is a schedule for the device problem. And presumably the order of the members is also kind of important. Yes. Okay. Absolutely correct. It has to be like this, it has to say that, it has to say this and this. Okay. There's some history behind that, but I did not care what the history was. <laughs> yes, is there some documentation behind that? I'm looking forward to it. Maybe. Somewhere the source code is the document. There's a skeleton. <laughs> All right, I got it. There might be. Good question. Yeah, there is. You, yeah. it, you think is it in the resident section? I don't know. It's on the wiki. I don't know. Wiki. It's on the wiki at all. I thought I tried to document that because that's one of the mysteries, right? Yep. This runs on exec libraries. Use a resident structure or ROM tag. See exec slash resident dot h. Okay, so there's a header somewhere that we can look at. See the under exec libraries? Oh. It's a very important little concept. Hey, so much help. What is the library? It's an interface. I always meant to polish this a lot more. Inline stuff. At least I merged interface and library in one article now. Like the old RKRM just had library. There's no mention of the word interface. So I merged the two together, so now it looks like just one. All right. Huh. So, where is it? I don't see it. I don't think it's in there. I think we got to go look at the includes. Yeah, there's a bunch of flags, like native means native PPC. Cold start means launch at a cold start, not uh, just a warm fast. reboot. Oh, this isn't actually, okay. It doesn't actually define any of this stuff in the header. It just, there's an enum, right? Yeah. And what do we have here? So match word, match tag, end skip, end skip. Oh, I remember skip. now. The launch, the launch uh, is my own special little thing that uh, Sebastian helped me. Too. I'll get to it in a minute. So node name identification string. Interesting. Interesting. So the actual so the point so launch dev as a pointer. Yeah, this is a pointer. He's a pointer to the he's a pointer to the, to the function. And okay. apparently you have to have an ID string and a node name. Initialization for priority NT unknown. And then type of module, NT underscore XXXX. No, I don't know what that is. Various tag flags. Well, okay. So basically, this isn't defined. 
No. Okay. Right. No, no, no. no we'll Fair enough. It. Just curious. You find out the hard way. Yeah. Okay. So I like to just steal it when I can. So yeah. I did. <laughs> Why work when you can steal? That's right. Paid to steal. All right. <laughs> So this, this is, I, I remember why it's called Launch now, because there's this uh, interesting Catch-22 with Mounted Library. Um, basically, if I let exec create my device on its own, then Mounted Library will start up and try to open me before I'm done finishing initializing. Okay. So it's like, how did I make this work, right? So I went another level of abstraction, use this launch program, which creates the device and returns one or zero. Oh, when you're done with the initialization. And the launch program calls create device. Oh. And I create the device manually. Right? Okay. So the nice thing about Amiga is you don't have to always do it one particular way. You can create your libraries and devices yourself the manual way. Uh, let me show you that. Kind of like right building your menus by going into the Look at this. intuition. So I did my own create library call. Now normally you would never do this. You'd let the system do this. But I'm trying to make sure that I'm done initializing before Mounter library is activated. So I create the library, do my init routine, check if there's any devices on the other end using the VTA. Then I add my device. To the system list. See, the trick is, as soon as I add device, um, any other program can open me. It what assumes I'm ready to go. What is this dev creates text? What is this? Oh, this is the standard skeleton you get when you uh, run ID tool. Oh, okay. It'll spit out this framework of tags with these tags and talking to those tags. I'll show you all the detail, but. Just a bit. These are the tags that describe how to create the device to yeah. exec. Saying, I am a PPC device, here's my list of function pointers, here's a checksum or something, and a few other odds and ends. Okay. But it, it's a standard template. That stuff's documented properly. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but I needed this launch point in order to create the device so that mounter library would open me later after I'm done. Because I, I uh, had all sorts of problems with that at the beginning. It was nasty. Because it would race, it, it was a race condition. They were racing each other. Oh. And people would say, I can't boot. No, I remember the They're on the beta list. Yes. I can't boot. I can boot. I can boot. I can't boot. Well, who cares about you? <laughs> You're doing it wrong! <laughs> Check your configuration. Yeah. Get a new hard drive. Yeah, it's, it's broken. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you get into, you know, yeah. racing. And can I just remind everybody, just real quick, okay, for all of you all who say, I, I, I had a broken DVD driver, I had a broken this drive, but if it's not on fire, it's a software problem. <laughs> okay? So, <laughs> hardware is almost always not the problem. Oh, spoken like a hard uh, I was about to say, <laughs> you're telling me that. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> I think these um, days LD with SATA connectors, sorry, SATA connectors on SATA fan cables. I think you can Sana. no longer say that it has to be on fire to be full. Wow. Well, they uh, fall off all the time. They do. They are That's poor design. It was poor. It's like it's the HDMI poor. connector. Uh, Who came up with that one? What about the micro USB connector? Oh, it's like it's terrible. They go from the mini to the micro. Save them, what, a millimeter? The HDMI one, it's just, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> terrible. Okay. Anyway, who thought of that? So, so I, as I say here, before I go any further, I have to talk about testing because Another problem with creating a disk device is that you have to load the OS from somewhere. Because you don't have a disk device. But you have to have a disk device to load the OS. So, where's an egg? Yeah. Yeah. 
Luckily, we can boot from USB, but... Well, I could after your help. <laughs> if you remember eons ago... Yes. Aeon. Uh, yes. <laughs> I, I was on the mating beta t IRC channel. I can't boot from a USB stick. What the hell are you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> so different from me, right? Yeah, I don't think I ever got it to boot from USB. It's not that hard. I can show you how. Um, Talk to the master. <laughs> you know, on the other hand, I did manage to get it to boot from <laughs> from the 5020 one time, and nobody else said they could. Yeah, yeah. But then it, it's yeah. probably because you had a. It's probably because you had a very fast disk or something. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, uh, or fast, another fast thing fast. is, I, I when I was on the iTech program, I booted from serial port through a through using the kernel pro protocol or Kermit, sorry, it's a Kermit to load the kernel across. Those That's are good cool. days. That's pretty cool. That took a while. I imagine. <laughs> <it did. laughs> sorry. Well, there's the TFTP method too. Eventually, we up I upgraded to that, and I was. So much better. Boot P or whatever it was. Right, right. No, it's TFTP, you're right. Yeah. Boot P was another option. Uh, but do we still have the TFTP? Yes, it, I believe it's in your boot right now. Yeah. Has anyone tried it? What? I don't think no. so. TFTP? No. And why would you? Well, you this driver. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you say that now. <laughs> I have to set up some rolling. Some of us didn't have a disk driver. <laughs> The other thing is you could use a 3112, which is the old framework, in a PCI slot. Right? Yeah, but you can't But you, you couldn't can't boot. boot. No, you can't boot from that. You, you had to get the kernel. The kernel could only come through the onboard Ethernet, or not Ethernet, CDN port. Or USB. Or, or Ethernet, maybe. It probably can. I yeah. mean, these days, PEX2 or whatever it's called. I, mean, no, I stuck with no. USB, so I like torture. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, so I, I so did that. Kind of like built. So it was always like trying to stick <laughs> three different ways of getting things done. I'm like, do, just do one of them. Leave the other ones alone. Get one of them working. Then put in the second variable. You clean up after yourself or reboot. Okay. So I decided to reboot. Better. Because it's a shortcut again. Because I know this disk device driver is always going to be present in RAM. I don't care about cleaning up because I'm not going to have to, right? So why waste time doing that when you could be getting stuff done? <laughs> so that's the choice I made. Others might disagree. They might say, well, you could have done testing quicker, but the warm boot was pretty quick. It is quick. It's yeah. very quick. So boop, done. I'm back up again. There we go. So that's, that's how I ended up developing it. So I wrote a little test program to drive it, which I believe I made some of you run at some point. I said, run this program. Ooh. On the beta test. Tell me what it says. <laughs> so Dave, why is there smoke coming out of my computer? It complains from some, but Dave was just all he said. Do not run this program. <laughs> Alright, so how are we doing this at the top? So this is interesting. Okay. This is interesting. So I'm pretending on the kernel. Okay, because I've never seen load seg before. Yes. Ooh. Evil. Evil. This is how uh, they're called segments, right? In DOS. Are these things like held in some sort of linked list or something? Yeah. Or the, how does yeah. it? Okay. Yeah. Linked list of segments. Linked with B pointers. Okay. B pointers. DOS. We're talking DOS. Like all DOS. All DOS all the time. So it, to get it into RAM, I load seg it, mm -hmm. which means just load it as an executable. Right? If I just load it from disk and then try to execute it, exec will go, uh uh, you're not allowed to just arbitrarily load data and run it. Because that's part of the memory protection that's nice. in there now. So. <laughs> <laughs> Used to work in the past, like on 68K, you can still do it. So um, then you fetch back that, that resonance structure that you then I guess specified earlier on. Sig. Then I yeah. get, I, I call this magic function. Yeah. I don't know. This is all calling territories. I just do what he asks. What he tells me. Well, what do you do? <laughs> yeah, okay, but you've got a well, you, now you've got a pointer, it's right? Like you, you've on. got a pointer to your to your resonance structure that you specified way back up. Yeah. Time. See now I got. What do you do with it. that? Now I call init resident on it. Yes. 
Okay. So I got a pointer to that little structure. Okay, okay. Go, this and is Sorry? Sorry. This is normally the sort of thing that exec does whilst, whilst it's booting the Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I got it. Yeah. Init resident calls my little launch function. Mm -hmm. Everybody's happy. Great. Right. right. Once it comes back, I go, oh, now I'm going to allocate a port, an I.O. request, talk to the thing, just like you'd normally do with any device, right? Because you have to have a, re a port, you have to have a request, then you call open device on it. Where is... I don't show open device here. I just where, are you, where are you pointing to the address that you got when you did your address that I'm using it? The address I got? I don't have an, I don't have an oh, address. What's, what's, what's object, object, right? Is that, is that a pointer to... Right. That's, I'm and not you're saying you don't know what that is. is. You don't know what that is. I'm not allowed to know. So that's knowledge. just for error checking. Yes. Okay. Right, I'm no. not allowed to know. All right. Don't look at it. Don't care. Okay. Got it. Oh look. Nothing to see. Mm -hmm. See, in the other uh, function up here, I called add device. Yeah. That added. Oh, down, down there. It's being passed it again. Yeah. Add device. Oh yeah, a little lower. There you go. That's the guy that adds it to the list, mm -hmm. and then open device will go and find it. Then. Okay when I call open device, which is in here. So you have testing port zero, port one, doing all sorts of magic in there. All right, test status support is somewhere else, I assume. Yeah, yeah I didn't show it here. I can show it to you. No, 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 sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you want to, that'd be fine. Well, I don't want to, I will. Where the heck is it? Device. Oh, I gotta lower the resolution or make the font bigger. Right? This is brutal. This topaz stuff that you guys want. Oh, yeah. I know. What is it with you and topaz? <laughs> you must oh. love topaz or I not. Hate topaz. Okay, you're not an Amiga programmer. Brutal. I'm you know, not an Amiga out, programmer. Ouch! <laughs> <laughs> love topaz or die. Get you on the server. <laughs> these are all. These are all uh, practice. Yes. Functions that you had to fill out somewhere else? Yes. Okay. Yes. So you can see I open device yep. up there. Gotcha. And then what do I do after that? Well, I ran off. I have a whole bunch of tests. I do device query, get geometry, change state, this, that. And I have little delays in there just to make it interesting for me. <laughs> do you randomize your delays? I could. I don't this time. Okay. You could do anything you want. It's your test program, right? But you're going to need a test program because Anything you run is going to expect all the services to be there all at once. Right. Well, they're not, I'm, I did them one by one. That makes sense. Make sure one's working before moving on to the next. I, I like to do things iteratively, and at each point, it actually works. You just do that so you get higher version numbers, and it looks like you did the it, work. Yeah, and then I get version numbers 147. <laughs> I look like Yeah, graphics right. library is marching on 300 pretty quick. Getting it. Getting it. <laughs> 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 you, you do little steps and you keep it running, right? So at any point, I could have stopped, given it to somebody else, and they could continue. That's that's my goal okay. as, a, as a software guy, right? Always keep it working, always keep it running. And I get hit by a bus. <laughs> See, in our in our tub, we used to call the the bus number. Yeah. Yeah. IBM too? No, it's not called that. But the we have bus a, number? We have a familiar concept. Your bus number had to be higher than one. <laughs> <laughs> one guy knows it and he gets hit by a bus. <laughs> the you lost survives. the project's dead, right? So you got two. Bus number two or higher. We had a bus number five on some things. <laughs> and some features, right? What's your bus number? <laughs> okay. So the... So that's what that's the magic of the test program. Got okay. it. And uh, you're so what you do, you boot, open your shell, run your test program, it loads in the kernel module, it does its magic. Yep. You ran your test, you stop, go back, compile another one, round and round and round and round. <laughs> These port is ready uh, functions that you have here. Uh, this is some set of initialization function that is being called on lib data. This is inside, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I can show you that one too. <laughs> it's it's pretty Because cool. lib data's got like I don't know, it's almost it's, it's more than a hundred different 
functions. I mean, it's, it's all, there's a lot of stuff in there. And then the error handling is also pretty comprehensive. Comprehensive is a good word. Yes. Incredibly But that's scary. also because he's got a, whoever wrote it, right, See, he's got to deal with a bunch of different devices. What I did was I wrapped it. ATA port, that's libATA again, right? Mm -hmm. This is libATA magic, doing its magic. I check if it's ATA or a tappy. If it is, must be a good thing. If it's not, no good. <laughs> Part of the problem might be. Very simple, but you can yeah, see I, I had know, to figure out where to know. tap it in libATA to get that function built. Mm -hmm. that, that takes some time. You have to search and you have to figure out what to do. It takes some time. It takes some time. But it's worth it because you're gaining all that experience for free, right? Can you beat that? Yes. You can. Um, it's accomplished. To report announced device tags. Yeah, so after you've had your device created, that device, mm -hmm. and you know there's something there, you, you go to mount your library and you say, Announce device. That means there is something there. Go get it. <laughs> and mounter library will then open your driver. It'll read the first sector or something off the physical medium. And then it'll go, oh, parse, 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 and say, oh, this is a audio CD. Or it'll go, this is a hard drive. This is a flash drive. This is now, in this whatever. particular case, you only have, you only have two possible hardware ports. Yes. Are each one of those things units in your device? Or That's a complex yeah. question. Because how do you address them separately? How do you yes, I get to that later. Part, okay. But in, a, in Amiga devices, you have the device, which is just basically a string. And you have the concept of a unit, like I said, right? Which is anything you want it to be. So you would think the logical thing to do would be called port zero, unit zero, like physical port zero is unit zero, physical port one is unit one. That would be the logical thing to do. And somehow I'm saying, I'm getting That's not what you did. This is not what I did the first cut through. Okay. Yes. I, I made the, okay. I, I went the other way, which is to make these unit numbers dynamic. Why? Oh, because you wanted to do hot swap or something. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Does, does the OS? I guess you could, right? I mean, uh, <laughs> is there some way of telling Mounter the device is gone? Yes. Dismount or dis or. Well, you have to, right? Well, it's it's announce announce for removal devices. Denounce. Denounce. That's okay. Right. right. So he goes away. Yep. And then you would just have something would be polling, I suppose. Yes. Okay. Now, normally that would be all you need, but some file systems in Amiga don't understand this concept. And they fall over and die. <laughs> like fast file system? <laughs> CD file system? Fast file system? Yeah, CD well, file system can't possibly wait, be. But yet. both of those are kind of CD file removable media. They were built they were designed for removable media. media. You'd think so. But? No. Uh, well, they're designed, ah, I see. They're, they're, they're expecting the control unit of the device to always be there because it's always physically hooked up. Yes. The actual disk media, on the other hand, is a separate issue, isn't it? Yes, Those separate things. issue, right. separate concept. All right, so when we talk about the device, we're, we're not talking about the same thing. The device to the computer is a control unit. Right. Right, so he can't ever change. No, he's, he's plugged in. Okay. He's not and that's why you can't do hot swapping. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Until no, somebody I'm, does some major surgery. Well, I'm, I'm working on a solution. There is a solution. Oh, yeah. there's always something. Okay. It's okay. just a technical problem. Okay. So, so you say that will eventually work? Yes. Yes. I ran into an e even bigger problem because I bought a, uh, what's it called, a port extender? Oh, yeah. Uh, no. a port multiplier, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bought one. You can do that with Adam. So I'm trying to make that work now. That would be so, good. okay. Now I plug that into physical port zero. What unit numbers? You got to go out and do discovery. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You got to do discovery and you can't have hard coded zero and one. No, uh, because. You have to learn what's out there. And you don't know what's there. It could be anywhere from one port to 15. Or does the standard allow for that? The standard allows up to 15 per physical port. 
room one, it wouldn't do a lot of concurrent I.O. in a situation like that. Though. Wouldn't be very pretty. No. No. Pretty slow. I think my, ex my expander, extender, whatever it's called, is four. So I get one physical port to four, four devices. But now it's like, okay, if I order, if I open SATA device unit two, which one did I just open? Right, I got you. Okay. Ah! <laughs> I got you. Okay. Plus hot swapping, throw that in there. And you're like, oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> And I do want to support it. I do want to support the extenders. Mm. Yeah. We need to on the 5,000. Well, on the table or even more. Yep. 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 Table is not going to Oh, how dare you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so there, there is a unit you know, design make decision make right here. Very <laughs> All right. Two here. physical, each, each port has a task. <laughs> so physical. physical. Each port can have multiple <laughs> unit numbers, <laughs> with each unit representing a mounted volume, basically. What do these tasks actually do? Do they sit in pole? This is an exec task. Okay, so what do they do? They're just simple threads. What are they actually doing? It's sitting there spinning, waiting for requests. Okay. Excuse me. Or pole. And hardware interruption. Yep, and interrupts. Yes, that's right. So he's, a, he's an I.O. control program is what he is. Yep. Okay. Yep. And I've decided, I decided to do it that way because it's just simplest. Now it's not the most efficient way. The most efficient way would be to run in the context of your caller mm -hmm. and not do context switch. That's tricky. He begins a new ticket. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I leave that to an exercise for the student. The students shall be called an answer. It is tricky. It is tricky. It's not impossible. I, I think I could. But. Is the overhead that much substantial where the uh, saving the contact, contact switch would be? It is on high speed devices now. The higher the, 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 higher the bandwidth, the more of that cost becomes a problem. Uh, it was never a problem on 68K, ever. It was so slow. It was so slow already, you didn't notice. But uh, in the modern world, you you want six gigabits per second on your flash drive. IO's fast. Like we're talking, not not your IO, but no, even, our IO, even PC IO the normal fast. people. Even PC IO is fast. <laughs> Human IO. It's six, six gigabits per second is the Standard rate right now for a for a, for a flash drive. Yeah, that's the current rate. We run at three because our controller can't do more than three. But and that's the launch. We probably don't even run at three in reality. I, well, it physically runs at three. Yeah, but I mean, I imagine the software is the best. <laughs> it's so busy doing other things. But you know, you get these users who expect instant. This and instant that. Gratification. Like, mm -hmm. so, uh, Where's my laptop, damn it? <laughs> yeah! Another one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I have, I still have a, I have a rework to do here. I want to, I want to work on that some more. Okay. I mean, it works okay now, but it means every time I put in a CD, I make it a different number. Right? And I've already had, Complaints from some testers say, well, CD1 should be CD1 forever. Well, now it's CD2. Well, now it's CD3. <laughs> well, it does become an issue. And it just starts stacking up all these CD. Yeah, it does become an issue for, for, some, for some things because things like, uh, actually quite a few things. Uh, yeah. yeah, quite a, quite a few hand, programs DVD, fall over. Uh, yeah, a lot of them. No, it's not that they fall over. It's well, uh, it keep changing tool types. Right? Right. So yeah. how did the system understand in the past, when you had to do floppy shuffling, it, will, the it unit, always came back as the same. Yeah, the unit was right. always the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So you'd go. It had to use a discriminator, which would be a timestamp or a serial number on the physical medium to figure out. Oh, you put the same disk back. And you had to kind of hope it was. Mm. Now, most of the time it worked. But yeah, and you know, I never yeah. even thought about it, and it makes. It's been decades now, so I can't got to think about it. But 
if you had two exact floppy disks. Now you're same. in trouble. And you put them in, and you while you're doing A, yeah. B, A, B, A, C, difference. and yeah. B and C are exact copies. Yep. Would it catch it? No, it would not catch it. It would it would write randomly to the other disk. Well, not randomly. It would pretend it's the old the other one. Yeah, yeah. It would just slam the data on there and keep going. Yeah. Now this is this is a required feature when we had to swap floppies all the time. You remember? Yeah. Well, pop the floppy out. Yeah. You did you something else for a while, yeah, put that floppy just, back in, it continued like it wasn't even missing a beat. Exactly. Yeah. I used to compile that way. There are all sorts of tricks you could do like that. Yeah. yeah. I didn't have a hard drive. It was rich like some people. <laughs> <laughs> Priorities, man. <laughs> you didn't have a house with a young kids so who wanted you to save their game. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's a. Uh, I can I can honestly say it's an ongoing debate on the developer list. <laughs> Mostly good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now what would you say about it, Tony? <laughs> See, I'm kind of staying out of it because I want to try to implement the port expander thing first. And then I'll have real world experience of what kind of hell you can get into. Because <laughs> I always hear these stories, what if, what if, what if, you know? Well, let's do it then. Right? <laughs> I, never, I mean, it always seemed to me that as a basic premise of computer software design, if you go outside your program, you should expect and tolerate failure. Yeah. You're reading or writing from the disk, and the disk is no longer there. Yep. You should be able to tolerate failure, and if your program fails, crashes because of that, that was your problem. And, you know, everybody was, oh, you can't dismount the blah, blah, or the network goes away. You can't drop the network in the middle of a browser being open. It's like, go, the browser <laughs> should handle it. This program should handle it. The network went away, the drive went away, yep. deal with it. You can't do that. And, oh no, you got to leave that there, you can't do it until the program quits and goes away. And yes. we, so then that you can't shut that in the network. So when we get our laptops, what are we going to do when we want to switch from the Ethernet to the Wi-Fi? Have to reboot? Yeah. Yeah, it would kind of suck. Wouldn't that suck? Yeah. See, he's already got, he's still got laptops on the brain. See, the, but the network <laughs> stack got all the way to the on this one. The yeah. letter button, you know, I just press that and the white light goes out and the red light comes up. And it's working with it. Yeah. yeah. And see, and you'd have to reboot a big OS to get it to do that. You know. You know it's, it's I, I can add and remove interfaces. So, network. What do you mean network? It's you'd interface. have to reboot to get Roadshow to recognize a change in the interface correctly. No. No, no, no you don't. Quite that far. No, no, you, you don't. don't. Do Roadshow shot. should shut down. You say not shut down? No, no, should no, no, it should not shut, shut down. down ever. It should always be up. Well, that would be even better. Like you Miami can remove did. interfaces. Miami Deluxe did that. We're getting away from the subject. But it's similar. Well, it's similar. Can, can it just, just to slightly move things. Like, I want to add and remove units, well, but I never shut my device off. And you're not allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> How did you? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wins. <laughs> Don't you mean Dr. Vanifar wins? <laughs> Did you start with the uh, functions in the track disk device as a template, ah, and then go and try and find the equivalent combination and yes. code for Levada? And how did you? That's where where did you begin? start to connect all this stuff, right? It's almost like you read the screen. Well, <laughs> I can't really read that far. Um, Where to begin? It's what to work on about. first? See, I know what Eldie's going to ask. Because it's already there? <laughs> no, I thought the same thing. I, I was going through it in my head. I'm like, well, what would you want to know next? What would you want to know next? Right. Well, there, as I mentioned here, there's no formula for doing it. But there is a template, um, and you know you're going to hammer registers and read registers, or you know you're going to handle an interrupt, so that, that's kind of given to you mm -hmm. automatically. Um, there are templates for each piece of hardware. Yes, yes, I found that out. Um, LibATA has its own concept of a template, too. 
which is documented in their design structure. So in LibATA, you have the core of the driver, which is shared with every device ATA driver that uh, Linux runs. And then you have this template, which is basically like uh, interface as an exec. A list of function pointers, here you go. You call these when they need to do a read register, a write register, you use my read register, my read register. Okay. That kind of thing. When an interrupt happens, you call my interrupt handling routine. Okay. It's the same, same basic premise. And uh, I managed to dig out of the SATA fsl.c file, fsl being freescale. Freescale Linux. Which is now uh, NXP. NXP Linux. Which may not be NXP much longer. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's going to be. It's going to be sold again. Yes. Oh my goodness. goodness. They announced that. I, I don't remember. Oh wow. Okay. Well, that didn't last long. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we'll keep going. Um, if if I had a different kind of uh, device, I'd have a different device template file, which is a .c. So, essentially, if you give me a PCI card with some random device on it, it's a random chip. I go look up that little .c template file and I adapt it to this driver, suddenly it can do both things. Mm -hmm. I decided to hard code my driver to only do the P5020 the first time. Only. That's all it's going to do. Right? And I do a check in there to make sure it's only that. But there's no reason why I can't tease it apart now and make a libata.library and then throw in all sorts of devices totally replacing any other driver that we had it Like before. the little controller on the P1 series, for example. Yes, yes. Whatever comes along. Or even go backwards in time, mm -hmm. right? Because there's been lots of people asking, why don't you support the SII blah, 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 right? Whatever number combination that day. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's in the Linux kernel, so I could adapt that. <laughs> It, it isn't that simple. There's some tricks sometimes with these drivers. They do evil things. And, yeah, anyway, <laughs> we'll get to that. Uh, there's also documentation of LibATA works. Yeah, I mentioned that. So now I have the source code for LibATA. I have the source code for the IDE framework. What to work on first? See, there you go. The first thing I decided to do is figure out if a device is there. Mm -hmm. So there's this SATA FSL probe function that probes to see if there's a device, right? That's your function. No, no, I didn't write that. That's libata's. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Freescale. That's their function. So I took that and I massaged it into my own Amiga-tized version, line by line. Well, I imagine it returns a bunch of information. Oh, it does all sorts of magic things. I will show it to you now. Oh, cool. <laughs> Maybe I should uh, down my resolution, though. <laughs> does Topaz come anything other than 8 point? No. <laughs> I didn't think that about it. Well, maybe. It does. Four. I don't think I have a way to change my font to it. Oh, I do. <laughs> I'm lying to you. Uh, <laughs> never he made huge. He never looked. There you go. Why would I look at this junk? This is oh. horrid. No, no, this this one. No. 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 Oh, okay. Oh, there All we right. Go. Right. go to Topaz 11. That's great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the right? Did I do the right thing? No, I did the wrong thing. That's a shell, sorry. <laughs> uh, select font. Oh. 60 column, that sounds bigger. There we go. Topaz, 60 column, even better. Yes. Not bad. Better. Why am I in this function though? That's not the right function. Probably here. Probably there. You just want them. Big source files. Yeah. Uh, 
There's my pro. Mm. Okay, it's big. That's the probe function. So what I do when I'm doing my porting is I use if zero <laughs> a lot, and I comment out the stuff that doesn't compile yet, make it compile, add a line, make it compile, add a line, make it compile, one by one. So basically I replaced anything that was uh, that's a debug statement, dev info. I had to replace that with my own version of dev info because this isn't Linux, right? I replaced that with a printf. Oh, that was easy, right? <laughs> some things are easy, some things not so easy, like OF underscore IO map. I believe OF is open firmware or something like that. Okay. It's basically saying, uh, what is the base address for this particular card or device? This is like uh, DBT data or something. Yeah, this okay. is this comes from the device tree. Yep, gotcha. Yep. Well, I replaced that with my own version, which was a hard-coded number. That works, Chip. Slam. <laughs> Read it off of you, whatever. Yep. Yep. And then you do offsets after that. Once you have your base, mm -hmm. the rest of the code stays the same. Now I'm okay, right? I'm not long. More printfs. Easy. Uh oh. What is this? What is that? Trans CFD receive watermark. What is that? What is that? Don't look at that. Okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so there's this compatibility check. Apparently, there was problems with other versions of this um, driver on different chips. Mm -hmm. One of them being the MPC 8315 SATA controller. I don't know what that is either. Comment out. We're done. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> That's not us. See, that's the beauty of focusing on your chip. Right? I got you. Not my problem. <laughs> you just comment the line out. If it ever comes up later, you can yep. uncomment it back in. Yep. Right. Just keep going, right? You're just trying to get a working driver. <laughs> Then you, you run into this. Next is a kernel Z a lock, right? Uh oh. What's that? So I go look it up on Google. You're not going to use that. Right? And I replace it with a lock vec tags. <laughs> now we're in Amiga land, right? So you kind of, or you, you can replace this with, uh, you with a wrapper. Whatever you want, right? I got you. Whatever you like. The trick was to get uh, this flag. This flag tells you what type of RAM to allocate. Once I do that, I would just translate that into the Amiga world, get the right type of RAM, DMAable or whatever, whatever that meant. Okay. I don't even remember. Remember some that. MMF flag. Yeah, some flag. There'll be a corresponding property in Amiga. Okay. Let's keep going again, right? Oh, IRQ. I need to know the the interrupt number. Part code. Slam. <laughs> keep going, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I see, I see the method here. Yeah, that's my method, right? Then here we go again. It's like PQ SATA V2. Look up that on Google. What the heck is this? Don't care. Get rid of it. <laughs> now, I found out, oh, we do have Snoop in version 2. Version I, 2 is way better than version 1. It's right? a fabric thing. Yeah. Is it? Should be. Okay. I don't know. Slam, it's version 2. <laughs> <laughs> See, you don't really have to understand it to keep going. <laughs> Outstanding. I knew it was data snooping, but yeah. that's it. <laughs> it's like, I don't know the difference between version 1 and version 2. Do I care? I, so I looked it up. Oh, yeah, the P5020 supports version 2. Okay, I'm done. It two must be better. It must be. It's bigger. Whatever it does. Shocking. <laughs> and then, uh-oh, uh-oh, now I hit a function. Da, 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 right. I don't have that one. That's libata. Gotta go find it. Gotta go find it. Go look through it. Copy the source code over. Amiga eyes. Amiga eyes. Next function. Next function. Next function. And after a few weeks of this, <laughs> you'll have quite the collection. You have quite the collection, and your probe function works. But what I do is I only implement what is in probe and nothing else. 
Nothing else, because all I want to do is make probe work. Then you that, test. That was my approach, right? Test revise, test revise. Test revise, test done. revise. Yeah. And then move on to the next. So step. the first thing I got, I think I sent uh, Matthew an email and said, Oh, it proved! <laughs> and he's like, So what? <laughs> Where's my driver? <laughs> So every step you kind of think, oh yeah, this works, you know, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> one by one. But the first thing I wanted to do is actually get that probe work so that you can see there's a device there and then go to the next step, next step, next step. So that, that's how I figured out how to work on first, is a probe. Once I probed it, then immediately the next question from Mounter Library was, Okay, uh, what's the disk geometry? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm so I query functions. Back to libata, right? <laughs> Find their probe function or their geometry function. Dig, 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 dig. Implement, implement. Okay. Takes hours and hours, but I like I like my method because it's very focused. So, so that's what you did. You started with track disk dot device. You knew that what or, or mount your library. Yeah. You knew who your you, you knew what the customers were library wise. You knew the template that you had to fit it in. You just iterated through each one of those requirements yeah. and amigatized from Linux. Okay. No, that's still an awful lot of work considering yeah. how much stuff is going to be in libata. Well, I only get what I need too. LibATA is way bigger than what we need. It does all ATA devices, tape drives and stuff. Like, tape I tape. don't want tape drives. <laughs> I do. I'm implementing <laughs> this part out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> for drones. I want all my basement to be filled with robotized tape libraries. <laughs> we have them all over. We have, we have a floor of this. Not in your basement. And they're, no, not in my basement. Now, the other way you could do it is take the whole tree and try to get it to compile. Why would you do that, though? Some people like to do it. No. They like to go, I don't know this thing, I don't understand it, I'll just try to compile it. Yeah, but everything, you're, the, the, <laughs> you're going to end up fixing piles of things that yeah. you don't need. I know. Or the, yeah. okay. But some like that approach, okay. and I've, I've seen it used successfully sometimes. Usually you end up cutting out so much stuff, you just end up with what I end up mm -hmm. with. So you kind of meet the same spot. Difference between bottom up and top down. Yeah, yeah, and and you can write wrappers for every function mm. that Linux has and not touch the source code at all, right? You can do that kind of thing. That seems like a that seems like a massive amount of work. Yeah, everything. Either way you go, it's going to be work, right? Yeah, but if you're doing it that way, you there's all sorts of things. It's not just it's not just uh, taking care of functions. You've got to hand create data structure to keep track of things that yes. the kernel would keep track of. And yeah. you've got to do all sorts of funky things with formats and it would just be a pain. I know that would be a real pain. It is. Might as well just use Linux. It works. It, it comes files. To, at, at some point you go, why don't I just make a virtual machine? <laughs> <laughs> and then Paul will kill me. <laughs> But you know, or you, you, oh, I'll just hypervisor this, you know. <laughs> Karma didn't like the virtual machines yesterday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see why uh, a lot of people just give up and go, well, why don't I just run it virtually? <laughs> but I enjoy the challenge, so. Never done a SATA driver in my life, right? Well, yours works nicely. Well, now it seems to work. It does. It does. Which will, yeah. With minimal random corruption. Hasn't barked yet. <laughs> minimal <laughs> random corruption. <laughs> but you just slipped up one by, did you? <laughs> well, oh. that's like minimum viable products. We <laughs> 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 guarantee minimal <laughs> corruption. <laughs> we guarantee minimal explosions. <laughs> minimal loss we of life. We guarantee a minimal alimony when you inevitably get divorced. <laughs> these, these are what we call weasel words. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes. Spoken by management usually. <laughs> Teamwork. 
No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Leadership. So I, I, uh, I said zooming ahead in time. Sound effect. Um, put a star light there or something. We have our devices being recognized <laughs> and initialized by the ATA, right? Now, we're, we're imagining I, I did all that work, right? Everything's done. Um, let's pretend it was. Yeah, it wasn't that easy, but let's pretend it was. <laughs> now you have an Amiga OS making all sorts of demands on your driver. Because you have all these applications going, I need this command, I need that command, 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 command. Which one to do first, right? Read seems an obvious choice. I found out read isn't the first thing they want usually. It's amazing what you find out. So what I did was uh, I, I went into my begin I.O. vector because as you know, as an Amiga programmer, right? <laughs> there are two main vectors for a device, begin I.O. and abort I.O. Right, right, right? right. Mm -hmm. Well, Tony does. Okay. <laughs> uh, we, they tried to explain it in the old. Uh, here you go. Creating an exact is it begin I/O entry point abort I/O. That's it. Oh. How hard could it be? Right? You got two function points. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Serial devices got this. Yeah, every device. Every I started with the ns command device query because that is the first thing that uh, I believe Toolbox wanted, Media Toolbox. Because I ran Toolbox, I had my serial capture, capturing what command it's asking for, dump, and then I go in order. Okay, it wants this one first, oh, then it wants this one, then it wants this one. Makes sense. Right? Yep. One minute. Now you, you could do other ways, but I thought top down again, right? The NS is new style. I new style. New style device. New style command. Device query. Okay. Now if you go to a tool like Ranger, and you go to the devices tab. Devices tab? Yeah. I thought it was devices. Maybe it's not. Volumes. No? Where is it? Oh, it's not what are you looking for? I'm looking for my, uh, oh, no, it's probably exec devices. Maybe that's what I was thinking. Yes, yeah, sorry, exec devices. So these are exec devices. Like, uh, let's go to 3114 IE device, right? There's this little NSD query down here. You may never have used it. You hit the query button, it spits back a list of all the commands it supports. <laughs> and the hex value in the actual command in more English terms. See, so you can see even the simplest little disk track disk device needs a lot of commands to talk to this OS. Very annoying. I thought it would be much smaller set. Then I find, oh, it needs this. Oh, it needs that. Oh, it needs that. You actually have to give it a TD motor. <laughs> No, but you have to give it a dummy function that says yes, ignore, you do. Right. ignore re return yes, success. You do. Yes, success. Right. See, you look at how long it would have taken you to figure that one out. <laughs> <laughs> Does FFS use that as part of the okay? Yeah, that's right. Assuming it's you, floppy drive. Yeah, it thinks a hard drive is a floppy drive. It does. So it turns on the motor first. <laughs> so you have to tell it <laughs> you, you do have to tell FFS every once in a while, yes, I clicked. Yeah. Yes, I click. Yeah, it's okay. Yes, I click. Okay. Read the data. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful OS. <laughs> beautiful uh, process. <laughs> so that that's the stuff you got to do to remain compatible. Is ah. that. Nice. <laughs> so one one of the things I did right away was you know print out debug of what the, what task is asking for what command. So I print out the task name because you can you can pull that out more or less ninety percent of the time, and then I just test. And what I found out, I did a little summary here of some of the commands. What component needs what command? Ooh, that's good. 
TD Boater. Oh, Partition Wizard needs it. What? <laughs> Won't run. Why? I don't know. I just do what I'm told. Are, are, you, <laughs> are you sure that it's calling TD Boater or it yes. is? Yes. Okay. Yes, I print out the task and print out the command it wanted. Hmm. And I, so Jorg apparently wrote it so that you could partition floppies too. No, no, repair. No, so no, it's why? A scan. I don't Partition know. Wizard is a repair facility. It's a repair. Yeah. So you could repair you floppies. Why would we? Why would you? What? <laughs> it's an OS4 <laughs> okay. only utility. How yeah, but OS4 runs on classic with floppies. Well, but it's also couldn't that also be for like a uh, zip drive or something? No. And, and isn't there in this? I don't know. Some some Sorry, lunatic some, some lunatic who remain un, unnamed wrote a one floppy device. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and it works very nicely. <laughs> Not right, Tony? <laughs> Sorry, I missed it. It said some lunatic wrote a one floppy device. Oh, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but it works. It works. <laughs> yes. But I use it on my G four all the time. Shane, you really ready to make a floppy drive? Do you have a floppy drive? Yeah. <laughs> so? <laughs> on my G4. There you go. And, and it's not a cat music? Nope. Nope. Wait, the original oh, OS had oh, yeah. floppy controllers? Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. had it in there. Well, now I'm great. jealous of those boards. <laughs> I'll bring you to tomorrow you can look at it. No, I just want another cat reasonable. I had to I, mm -hmm. I killed mine when I was packing up my SAM. It was strange. Like you command and clear is used by format. What does the command clear do? I don't even remember. It clears out the list of white. Oh, it's supposed to purge, isn't it? It purges the list of clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it purges. Where is command clear? Oops. Went too fast. Oh, it's a port command. I have to admit, you're moving through this editor very, very deftly. Ah, so I, re I replied, right. success, everything's fine. Yes! Shut up! That. <laughs> That's the kind of driver we need. It's, it's a two-line function. So I don't update. know what you want, and I don't care. Yes. It worked. Now go away. <laughs> update as well. It says just go away. Everything's fine. <laughs> Nothing to see. <laughs> okay. And I'm sure that's perfectly safe. I'm sure. Okay. This is what I learned from that IE framework. Remember that? Yeah. By yeah. Stefan wrote. He figured all this out already. So. Okay. I went, well, if his driver does it, his driver's been working for years. Then this I will assume. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, there's no caching. Well, actually, I should probably write those a little nicer that, because there is that, caching that, within that, CQ. That. The, uh, are you familiar with NCQ? No. What What's CQ? NCQ. Native command queuing. Oh. Native I command queuing I is uh, you can send multiple commands to your controller asynchronously, and they just run on the controller. Mm -hmm. So I could send, say, a dozen read commands, all different addresses. The controller will then take them, sort them, so that minimal head movement occurs, and it will. Read them sequentially. Uh huh. Need of command queuing is right. Okay. Yeah. So long as you don't use synchronous I/O. Yes. And yeah, yeah. all SATA controllers have NCQ. Well, all the modern ones have NCQ support. Cool. That was the theory. Yeah. Now, if you read on Wikipedia, it it, it equaled like one percent increase. Mm -hmm. So they were hoping for fifteen or something. Mm -hmm. Right. Didn't do much. Seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like store gathering. Is it? Another concept? Or no, I mean, it's, but the, the performance there is actually better than 1%. I mean, the you get is, something, though. Yeah, but it's only with more modern workloads, right? So over time, we don't store, when we, we want to make a, when we want to write to storage, we don't want to store 32 bits or 64 bits or mm. a cache line size at a time, right? Right. We, it, typically, the actual data that we want to store is the stream, and that byte stream is pretty darn long. So, really, what you don't want to do is to constantly be doing all this storing, particularly if you're going to be changing it all the time. 
So what you do is you have this concept called store gathering. And store gathering says, okay, well, you've done the store to this address. And you know what? You've sorted it the second time. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to sit around and I'm going to have some arbitrarily large amount of storage of, say, a page size, like 4K. And anytime somebody wants to store anything in there, I'm just going to kind of or that store into it. And then at some point in the future, I'll do all of them all at once. Yes. Right? Because it makes no so, yes. so long. That's why, you have, that's why you have to have barrier ops yeah. in, in the power oh, ISA, yeah, right? Because yeah. he's, we don't guarantee, yeah. uh, Adam, I can never pronounce that word. We don't guarantee atomic store operation yeah. because we're doing all this gathering. Because we're trying to, we're waiting for you to stop doing all these stores so we can do it in one big, sh you know, one big push. Yeah. Yeah. Also, because it's it's nice and close in your L1 or somewhere in some little yeah. register file, so that when you inevitably fetch it back before you do the store, it's right there. So See, it's real fast. So we always have these great ideas, yeah. but, and then we start layering. We do, but the point yeah. is, is that <laughs> the, the performance benefit that you get out of that, which is significant, is typically killed by the fact that now you're sprinkling your code with you know with large these, and stucks uh, and IEIO and sync and IEIO. Yeah. yeah. So it's not in force, in order. I don't remember what the mnemonic is, but yeah. Yep. And I have a module. Enforce in order IO, I think is what I, I, EIE. Yeah. Uh, yeah, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, EIEIO. Sometimes you got to use sync, and sometimes you got to use EIEIO, and. Something I. Yeah. Where is it going to? Oh, it's on that junk. I want to. I have a function that actually does that. Where did I put it? Kernel. Ah. Conjunction, junction, left short function. There it is. <laughs> there you go. Where is the... Uh, where did I find that font? Ah, oh, there it is. A little bigger. Yeah. Sync, E-I-E-I-O. Yep. Sync, E-I-E-I-O, I sync. Yep. So now every time I touch a register, I'm doing this. Are you sure you want to do that? I was told to. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure I shouldn't. Okay. But no, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just those those things. There's there's a pretty big cost in using them a lot. Yeah. Performance wise. Yeah. We've just been told to do it to be safe. Well, no, safety is more important. Data safe. integrity is always more important than performance. Yeah. Sadly, minimal cost of tape. Well, that's why it's an MVP. <laughs> Minimum viable product. <laughs> I love it. It's the greatest thing ever. Yeah, it does. It's an acronym that just rolls off the tongue. It's time. wonderful. Yeah. Solves all your problems. It does. <laughs> well, we didn't tell you it was going to be bug free. It's minimally viable. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you can see. It was quite an adventure figuring out what command goes where. Yep. <laughs> and I found no nobody actually tried to map these before either. Interesting. Probably because they're kind of dynamic. It's also possible they were just going to implement all of them. I wasn't about to do anything I didn't have to do. Smart man. Because I'm lazy. Good. Yeah. So. <laughs> Never underestimate the power of laziness. That's right. If I can avoid implementing a command, I will do it. So where are you going to get the SCSI support? How does that change into the rim change in there? Where are you looking? Sir? To show your cursors. Oh. Add change into the rim change it. Oh, these wonderful commands. Yeah, those two. Yeah. What, what about them? Yeah. You've got to mention there as though only, uh, uh, only CD file system calls it, but certainly FFS does and NGFS does as well. They might. Do that okay. Okay. I'll believe you. <laughs> <laughs> but I never use those on my test cell. <laughs> yeah. So I just did what I know. Yeah. So other file systems, anything you put on uh, removable media, right? Yeah. You have to put those in your file system. Oh, yeah. Right. See so anybody found out that it's made a loop. Right. Right. Because otherwise, um, if you pop the hard drive out somehow, <laughs> or you had NGFS. Installed on a CD, like oh, burned on a CD. Okay, one of those hard drives that are Yeah, or the hot swap. Cyquest drive. Yeah, yeah, the gold Cyquest. Oh, yeah, those um, those two functions tell you add uh, add and remove, change, interrupt. Int. Remember what int is. 
Yeah, it's a interrupt. Yeah, you get a software commands. You, the core, get a software interrupt. Yeah. The, 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 uh, yeah. The and I use CD file system to test that, obviously. I did not use fast file system or anything else. Yeah. <laughs> S SFS probably supports it too. You don't get that when somebody pulls a USB drive out? USB drive? Well, I wouldn't be the device driver for that. Yeah. I'm, that's, I'm, not, I'm not the guy you're talking to. <laughs> but in, in theory, the USB driver would be able to They would the have to support those exactly. too. Yeah. To make it look like a track disk device. Right. That's that template we kind of talking about at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh, he's, he's digging. No. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. It's all good. <laughs> Onward. 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 Uh, we finished it. Oh, reasons lost in its three. <laughs> <laughs> yes, one of the things I have avoided is implementing anything to do with SCSI. Well, as long as I humanly possible, possibly could, I avoided it. But the TAPI unfortunately uses SCSI commands. So I knew that day would come. <laughs> Oh, and also libata is implemented as a SCSI interface. So as I'm trying to illustrate here, there's a lot of steps to just do a read, right? Because it's got to do all these translations. And libata actually expects me to take the Amiga command, convert it to a SCSI command, feed that to libata, which then converts it to an ATA command, which then finally issues it to the hardware. So it adds that extra layer. Well, some. Yeah. Why? I said. <laughs> Backwards compatibility. Why? It's just it just looks like SCSI no matter what. So if you're in Linux world, you're always issuing SCSI commands to drivers, to ATA devices. Always. There's no other way. In my driver, I could do what I want. So I did half and half. <laughs> if I know it's a hard drive, I don't bother with SCSI. If, if it's an Atapi drive, I use SCSI. So I, I kind of did it that way for the first cut, anyway, just to get it working. And that's what the current one does. But it means that I diverted, I, I diverted away from the core code. So I'm trying to put the SCSI layer back on and the reason why I want to put it back on is for error handling support. Because all of the error handling support is done on the SCSI layer in libata. All the good error handling, like the retries and such, is done with that layer. So I'm losing that by doing it the direct way. But you, know, you win some, you lose some. So. <laughs> so there's a little example of how many different steps there are just to get a bite off of a hard drive. <laughs> Lovely, eh? No. No? <laughs> I was glad you got the LCD working. What? Oh, the LED. LED, right? pardon me. Yes. LED. <laughs> One of the last things I worried about, <laughs> making a little light flash. <laughs> Don't knock it, Linux still haven't done it with you. Ah! <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I guess we should fix that in U boot, hey? On the X5000 U boot. I don't know, I have a copy. Yeah, it's freely available, it's GPL. Oh. <laughs> so, to Tony, what you gotta do is you gotta you gotta write a forceful letter to Aeon and say, give me the source code to you boot. They have to. They have to, because you have a copy of the binary on your computer. 
Well, well, clearly, uh, it's better to be than those, those idiots and Pharisees. Oh, 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 idiots! <laughs> we could have done it much better uh, if, of course, we had been asked to uh, do it in the first place. <laughs> no, no. no, by the way, even if I had been asked, I'd say, no, because it sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, just kind of... You're not bitter. That's good. <laughs> well, a little email mimicry there. Are you talking for those who are curious of what I'm doing? <laughs> and then I went, well, that's it? So I didn't go any further on my explanation on this on this page, but we can keep going. <laughs> you have time? Well, usually we go till five. Let's go. <laughs> can you um? Okay. Could you? Yes, sir. I'm trying to think what I'd like to see first. Well, one of the interesting things I went all the up was uh, source code structure. Because when you're porting stuff, you end up with a lot of files. Like hotel.txt. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> to do. Which files? There's lots of files. To do file. Shopping list. LED.c. Oh, look, there it is. That's what, that's what. There you go. Nobody cared about anything but LED.c. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else mattered. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> See, just fiddle with a few bits. Some uh, magic fairy gave me these numbers. <laughs> Put them in there. Way it goes. <laughs> Very helpful. What's going on? See you later. CMD. Where? What did you just talk? CED. Oh, CED. E. CED. So that's an E. Yeah. yeah. yeah this, this projector can be a little sharper. Yeah. Or our eyes can be a little younger. One of the two. Something's got to change. Well, that's where I could have done uh, something like that, right? Change it. Ah. A little better? Probably won't change until you start talking to them. Oh, it just did. Oh, you mean this? Reprinted. So what it, what I did was I mimicked the, the Linux source tree because everything starts with Linux source, so I just called it source, and I started moving files around in there, right? So I go to source. I'm using command line because I'm that way. Dopus. Dopus is from Dopus. Okay. <laughs> Include. And then there's a SCSI directory. So basically everything under source comes from libata. This is all Linux code. Yeah. Now some of it I greatly simplified. <laughs> this is not direct Linux code. This is me. <laughs> Copying their code and modifying it to uh, to fit my needs. Is there so many? Oh, it's over here global, isn't it? So, because because the, Linux code is limited to terabyte. That's why we're limited to terabyte. On, uh, no. No, we're not limited to two terabytes. No. Not at all. That was a vicious rumor. Why <laughs> well, we shut that one down? There you go. Uh, like when I put my three terabyte in there, it's a 2.2 gig. Uh, well, what, what file system? What file system are you no. using? Oh, uh, next year. Oh, talk to Tony. Yep. <laughs> SCSI host template has a, a lot more fields than that, but I only needed three of them, <laughs> so I only copied three. <laughs> so sometimes I really simplify things. Sometimes I didn't, depending on what it was. Again, SCSI command, I only defined it what I needed and it didn't do everything. The real SCSI command structure there is a couple, two or three pages long. Yeah. It's a monster. So because I did it slowly, piece by piece, I only copied fields I needed. In there, right? But the downside is I can't easily merge code. Well, when would you, oh, because you're, if you need to update from uh, yeah. ATA. Yes. 
So I, after I was finished with my first version that worked, I went back and updated all the old code to have all the fields in there and activate